5.3 is the second derivative test. That's on pages 238 to 247 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of curve sketching by applying differentiation and limits. Our lesson objectives, number one, to understand how the second derivative of a function help, can help us find inflection points on that function. And number two, to be able to use a second derivative test to find intervals where a function is concave up or concave down. So right now we know that the first derivative of a function allows us to find out where that function f of x is either increasing, that's where the first derivative is greater than zero, or decreasing, that's where the first derivative was less than zero. So what does the second derivative mean then for the shape of a function? Well, since f prime x tells us how f of x is changing, then it stands to reason that f double prime x tells us how f of x, f prime x, sorry, is changing. So basically, we're looking at how the slope, which is the first derivative, remember the slope was always f prime x, so we're looking at how the slope is actually changing. So it's the change in the change of the function. So if f double prime x is greater than zero, then the slope of the function is increasing. And we say that the, this curve is called concave up. So if I look at like a parabola, this is a concave up shape because as I go along this shape, the slope of this line is getting steeper, which means the, the uh, first derivative is increasing because the slope is getting bigger. And that not only happens on the right-hand side of this graph, but it also happens on the left-hand side because as you move on the left-hand side, as you move around the curve, this slope is, is a negative slope to begin with, but it's becoming less negative around that shape. So this is called a concave up shape. Now in this shape itself, there is a decreasing part from the left-hand side to the vertex, but then there's also an increasing part. So something that is concave up cannot be increasing or decreasing. When we take a look at f double prime x when it's less than zero, that means the slope of the function is decreasing. And that would be a shape where it's like an upside down parabola. So over here, you can see that we have a negative slope and then it becomes more negative or more steeply sloped towards the negative side. And so it's becoming more, ne more and more negative. And on the left hand side here, we have a positive slope, but as we move along the curve, that slope is decreasing and it's becoming closer and closer to a horizontal slope. And we say that this curve in this case is concave down. And once again, we can have a increasing and a decreasing part to concave up and concave down. So the point where a curve changes from concave up to concave down is called an inflection point. And it's here that f double prime x equals zero. So if you were uh, to, so to find the location of inflection points, you need to find the second derivative, set it equal to zero and solve for x. And to find where the function is concave up and concave down, we'll need to do a sign analysis. So say we have a function that looks something like this. Well, at this point, this graph from um, here to here is concave down, but from there to here is concave up. So from the left all the way to the middle point is concave down, and then it changes to going concave up. So this point somewhere in here is called an inflection point, and that's where your second derivative is gonna be equal to zero. So although this function is increasing all the way from left to right, there is a point where it changes from concave down to concave up. and so second derivative, if you set it equal to zero, we're going to find the location of that point. And if you do a sign analysis of your second derivative, then you're going to find out exactly where this thing is concave down or concave up. So here's our example. It says let f of x equal x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. We're going to determine where f is decreasing and increasing by using the first derivative and sign analysis. We're going to determine where the graph is concave up or concave down. And we're also going to give all the critical points of this graph. And critical points kind of means max and mins and now also inflection points. So to do part A, we need to find out where it's increasing and decreasing. We need to find the first derivative. That's 3x squared minus 6x. And what we can do is we can take out a 3x as the greatest common factor. We're left with x minus 2. So we have um, two points, x equals 0 and x equals 2, which will be either max or mins. or they could be inflection points, and we'll see how that works here in a second. So if we do a sign analysis, because it just wants max, or it just wants uh, the intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, we put in a zero, put in a two. If we plug in anything between zero and two, like a one, I get three minus six, which is negative. If I plug in something greater than two, like a three, I'll definitely get, uh, I'll get 27 here, minus 18, which is positive. 
And if I plug in something less than zero, like a negative one, I'm definitely gonna get a positive answer because if I plug in a negative one, I get a positive here. And then this negative six times a negative one is gonna make that positive as well. So I get a positive answer. So we can say that it's increasing from negative infinity to zero or uh, two to infinity. And we know that it's decreasing from zero to two. Now, that's part A. Part B says we need to determine where the graph is concave up or concave down. So now we find the second derivative. That's f double prime x. And so that gives us six x minus six. And that gives us, uh, if we let that equal zero, that is just six times x minus one. So the only x value that we have it's going to be equal to positive one. So at positive one, we know that it could be an inflection point. So if we do a sign analysis of the second derivative, we should always remember to label which derivative it is, because now that we're doing two different sign analysis, um, we should make sure we can tell them apart. So here's the first derivative, here's the second derivative. If I plug in something like a two, I get a positive answer. And if I plug in something like a, a zero, I'm definitely going to get a negative answer. So critical points, it means I'm either going to have a max or a min. Well, if I'm going from increasing to decreasing, that means uh, that that point zero is going to be a max. Zero comma something is a max. And if I'm going from decreasing to increasing, that's going to be a minimum value. And I know that this is an inflection point here. And that's going to be one comma something is my inflection point. Now remember that in order to find the y values for all these points, you need to plug it into the original function. Don't plug it into um, the first derivative or the second derivative. You're just going to get zero. So you want to plug in to the uh, original function. So if I plug in a zero into the original function. I get a answer of four. If I plug in a positive two, I get eight minus uh, 12 plus four, which is just zero. And if I plug in a one, I get one minus three plus four, and that is a two. And so you can find all these points. Remember that you have to take the first derivative to find where it's increasing and decreasing, and those x values are gonna be max or mins. Second derivative tells you where it's concave up, concave down, which we didn't state here. So we should say concave up is from one to infinity and concave down from negative infinity to one. And if we uh, set that second derivative equal to zero, we're gonna find out where the inflection point is. So in summary, by finding the second derivative of a function and letting it equal zero, you'll be able to find what we call an inflection point. And this is where a function changes from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up. So this is a concave down, changing to concave up. And this is concave up, changing it to concave down. So it could look either way. And a function is concave up when it looks like either side of a positive parabola. So something like that or something like that. That's both concave up. And a function is concave down when it looks like either side of a negative parabola. So something like that or something like that. A sign analysis of the second derivative will help us find out where the function is concave up, and that's where that second derivative is greater than zero, or concave down, that's where that second derivative is less than zero. So your assignment is on pages 246 to 247. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.